Little option play that time. Pots, another cutback. Oh, man, another oh, cutback. Oh, He's oh, going to go oh, to the oh. outside. Does he have enough horse? He does. And he does. Touchdown, Trayson Pots. Made the Wildcats and some pressure as well on the quarterback. Third down and four. Rockets, quick throw that time. Gets it out to his playmaker. Williams. Williams is going to pick up enough for the first down and then some. He's on his way. He's got one man to beat, and he's still on his feet. There he goes. He's at the 30, the 20, the 10, and he's in for a touchdown. Kick. Walker's going to field it on the fly at the 30 yard line. Makes, Makes first a guy first miss. guy miss. Going to set up the wall. Here he goes. Gets to the outside. And he's got a couple of them. Marty Nuck and a guy around. How would you like to try to get around him? Ellen Walker's going to walk in from first down, so it brings up second and short. Kavanaugh up the middle. It's a nice trap play. Kavanaugh is going to kick it to the outside. Has a lot of running room. Still on his feet. He's at the 30, and he's just got some speed. Here comes Potts, left-hand side. He's going to kick it. Wow, what a, what a shift. He's going all the way. He's going all the way. How about that block? Motion out to the right. They're going to swing it to him. Hunter Webb gets a few blocks, going to cut it across the end. There he goes. He's got some. He's got the rail set up, and he gets to the first down. Still on his feet. Puts he's it on. Hunter Webb with a touchdown. Wow. Touchdown. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Blue Jay Stadium here in Bloomsburg, Pennsylvania, for tonight's high school football game of the week, right here on PA Sports Live, powered by the Web Weekly. Hello everyone, my name is Jamie Spencer and I'm joined by my partner in crime, Paul McGinn and uh, Paul and I, we did some uh, team that Central actually struggled with in week one. Wow, Loyal Stock looked impressive. They did everything early. They were up 30-0 at the half, ended up winning the game 37-7. Defense was phenomenal, special teams was great, offense looked great. A lot of good things happened last week. Yeah, they look like a well-oiled machine last week against the uh, Wildcats there in Mifflinburg. And you said it. If you compare like games, you know, uh, Central Columbia week one struggled with Mifflinburg, had to come back late from a 13-point deficit to uh, just 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 nip the uh, Wildcats there in Mifflinburg, 21-20. Should be a good ball game here tonight, though. As Central will take the field, a beautiful stadium here in Bloomsburg, Pennsylvania. They have the two-tone of the AstroTurf, and it looks sharp. Folks, wait till you see the actual playing surface. It's unreal. It's artificial grass, so we were out there trying to take some sand wedge divots. Ain't, ain't happening. <laughs> ain't happening. But special thanks to Kyle Rude, big, great, great friend of ours, Paul. He takes great care of us. Definitely give Kyle a call. You got his information up there on the screen. He's one of our pre-game sponsors this week so special thanks to Kyle hey welcome aboard yeah thanks Kyle appreciate the sponsorship making uh, this great product a reality technology is great I mean, we had some uh, notes sent to us this week about people that comfort of your own home and that was my tagline this week I don't know if you caught it in the web weekly we're powered by the web weekly so I, I can say web weekly and I just did three times but what I'm saying is it's this is the only product the only local product product where you don't actually have to you you can uh, Flinburg 21 20 after coming back from a 13 point deficit week two we're able to to knock off Lewisburg 21 uh, excuse me 24 17 also had to come all team and uh, they're playing some good football and I I expect uh, coach Van Fleet and his boys will be ready to rock here pretty soon yeah the Lancers are coming off back-to-back -back wins and find themselves sitting in third place in the District 4 Class A uh, standings. Loyal Sock looked, like I said, a well-oiled machine last week. We're running on all cylinders down in Mifflinburg. Uh, the Lancer defense, led by, got to say it, Hunter Webb. 11 tackles last week. I believe he's averaging 11 tackles a game this year. Absolutely dominant. Very strong. He's kind of playing that uh, linebacker position, but he's also lined up as a safety of some sorts. But, yes, definitely number seven. Keep an eye on him. He's a good-looking kid, by the way, Paul. But then you got to talk about their running back, who just really kind of appeared of late, and that's Cole Cavanaugh. Uh, had a record-breaking performance a couple weeks ago, and then last week ran all over the Mifflinburg Wildcats. He's one of those guys that he can do some damage. Incredible speed. He had a few breakaways last week that I was just like, who is that guy? Yeah, he's sneaky quick, too. Very patient. Um, you know, moves sideline to sideline really well, but when he has his vision and he sees a hole open up, man, he has a quick burst and gets open. Like you said, he is one of the areas... 
uh, leading rushers, I believe the second leading rusher in the area, has 384 yards on the season, three touchdowns. Get this, 340. And then he's been kind of slacking a little bit. He's only picked up four, one, and one. But w nevertheless, you can't say enough about number three, Marcus Williams, on both sides of the ball. Yeah, Mr. Williams there. He's throwing. The guy's done it all. The good thing or a bad <laughs> Going through the intersection, <laughs> slowing down, rolling their windows, asking if uh, they can get my autograph. You know, I don't know. I know they're joking, but, man, they're going to cause an injury or an accident or something. Uh, you know, but you said it, yeah. It's little, worse. little local celebrity type feeling. It's worse than Pokemon Go. <laughs> and so we're just moments away from opening kickoff here. Jamie Spencer along with Paul McGinn as the Loyal Sock Lancers are decked out in their traveling whites. Looking sharp with the maroon helmets with that North Carolina teal or whatever color that is uh, kind of highlighted. Central name the five-yard line closest to us. Opening play, opening drive between two very good football teams. Yeah, this Central Columbia offense, last week they were just as potent as their defense was stingy against Tawanda. Blue Jays will send three wide receivers to the top side. Quarterback is in the shotgun. Quick throw, quick stop. They try to get the wide receiver screen, and it's belt right at the line of scrimmage. Picks up maybe two or three. Uh, there's a late flag, Paul. Uh, it'll, I'm going to have to see what's going to happen here. Yeah, and you see what Columbia, Central Columbia likes to do already. They'll spread you out a lot like Loyal Sock will. They'll have a lot of pitch and catch. Uh, the quarterback here, Aaron Farver, is a two-year starter, coming off one of his best games of his high school career last week. Completed almost 60% of his passes for 251 and two touchdowns last week, Spence. And it looks like we got a personal foul against the Loyal Sock Lancers. It's a face mask, so that's an automatic first down, 15-yard penalty. Paul, we're going to have to be on our toes because we are actually on the visitor's side of the field. And whenever the officials make a call, they are, their backs are to us. Three wide receivers to the bottom. A quick spread out. I'm going to throw, and it's uh, kind of a uh, muffed up pass, incomplete, Paul. Yeah, facing some pressure there. Uh, quarterback kind of maybe short changed that throw there to the outside. Missed his mark just a little bit. Had an open guy, though. So that'll bring up second down and 10. 11.35 left to go in the first quarter. Opening drive here, Central Columbia and Loyal Sox. You're not kidding here, bud. They like to spread it out. This time they're just going to go with the old traditional eye. Quarterback under center is a quick toss. Again, by that defense of Loyal Sock. Yeah, number 30, Isaac Gensimer on the carry. Don't let them fool you. They like to spread you out, but they can run the ball as well. This Blue Jays has a is a very balanced offensive team. In fact, last week they ran and threw for over 250 yards against Tawanda. I think they could have done anything against Tawanda last week, 48 to nothing. Brings up a big third down and long situation for the Blue Jays. One wide receiver to both sides. Quarterback under center, he's going to roll out to the bottom. He's going to throw it up in the air. He lets it fly. Beautiful ball, but it was just a little too far. The attendant receiver that time was Luke Hook. And I think Luke ran a hook instead of going to the fly. Yeah, a little miscommunication there between the wide receiver and the quarterback. Looked like Hook there, uh, you know, maybe was running a double move. Uh, quarterback maybe had to get rid of the ball sooner than he wanted to, but you said it. A little miscommunication there, and the ball was overthrown. Putting situation here for Central Columbia. The ball is at the 44-yard lines. You got Marcus Williams and number 25, Colt. Habanol yeah, look out for those two. 15-yard line. Low snap. Great kick. It's up in the air. Kavanaugh's going to field it right at the 8-yard line. Takes it across at 10. Great cutback. Gets to the 20. And then he stood up pretty quick, but a decent return. And so the Loyal Sock Lancers will take over first and 10, Paul. And uh, we'll see if we can get some things going. Quarterback is number four, Connor Watkins, six foot 165, just a sophomore, and he's really a mature sophomore, if you will, Paul. Absolutely. This Loyal Sock Lancer offense is arguably one of the best in all of District 4. 
They have tons of weapons. We've talked about a few already. Cole Cavanaugh, Marcus Williams, the young guy behind center, Connor Watkins, dishing the rock. Williams to the top. Two wide receivers will come to the bottom. And we're going to go with the design quarterback, uh, kind of an option look, and he picked up a nice gain there on first down. Good read that time by the young sophomore. Hey, anytime you can pick up five yards on, a, on first down and ten uh, and put yourself in second and short, third and short, you're going to be moving the ball and you're going to be moving the chains. 10-15 left to go here in the opening quarter. Scoreless, Loyal Sock is driving. Kavanaugh gets the quick gives, and that hole just closes up, and Kavanaugh does his point just to keep on keeping that play alive. Ends up picking up two or three, but a great defense of pressure up front by the Blue Jays, Paul. Yeah, you said it, man. That was a tough two or three yards there uh, that Cole was able to pick up. Can't say enough about this offensive line. Anchored by the big Cray McCracken, all-state candidate there, as well as three first-time starters this year. Third down. Watkins going to roll out. He's going to throw across his body. He has a man open, but uh, just a little too high. That time it was attended for Gerald Ross, who was running that inside pattern. He might have had him incomplete, so that's going to bring up a fourth down and punting situation for Lawsock. Oh, it was there, Paul. Boy, Connor, he stepped up in the <laughs> pocket there. And he put a, little, put a little mustard on that one, didn't he? Yes, he did. As he came to the sideline and uh, talks to his coaches and says, ah, my bad, coach. No harm, no done. Good snap. Gonna take a run and another great kick. And it's at the 30 yard line, taking uh, the up back and a lot of big hits going on there, Paul. And he takes it out to about the 45 yard line. Tough for me to uh, kind of pick that up. Special thanks to our friends at Sanders Mortuary. Right there in the heart of Newberry. And, uh, Paul, they are great people, big fans of PA Sports Live. Uh, we talk about it each week. It's tough to give these guys a plug, but here's the situation, folks. You can never go unprepared. So give them a call, free consultation. That's Sanders Mortuary, a proud sponsor of PA Sports Live. Powered by the Web Weekly. Close to that first down marker, it looks like he's going to be about a yard short. Good surge going off that left side. Hey, the Blue Jays running attack this year has been especially strong. And Spence, it's going to take a solid team effort by the Lancers to hold running back Isaac Gensimer from being the difference maker in this one. Brings up a second in short. Blue Jays hustle to the line of scrimmage. Going to go with the same play the opposite way. Gets enough for the first down. And... Um, Good surge up front again, Paul. Yeah, can't say enough about this running back here. Isaac Gensimer, number 31. This year so far, averaging 134 yards per game and is one of the district's leading rushers. Last week, come off a career game against Tawana, rushed for 229 yards and a touchdown. Impressive stuff. I am backfield again. Quarterback under center is just going to give it to the big guy again. Let him roll. And he picks up about three or four. Better job that time up front by the Loyal Sock Lancers. Got to give out a quick plug to number 33. That is Brandon Bauman there on the stop. I should have brought my reading glasses this week. It's tough. This is definitely a size six font. <laughs> It is what it is. Second down and seven. So you have reading glasses and then other glasses, huh? Uh, next break in the action, I'll tell you about how I repaired my glasses this week. Here's the toss. And great initial stop right at the line of scrimmage, but uh, kudos to that kid. He kept on moving. Uh, Loyal Sock had a tough time of bringing him down. There were plenty of bodies there. Just couldn't drag him to the ground. Yeah, I believe number seven, Hunter Webb, initially plugged the hole. And then the, the rest of his com uh, compadres just swarm into the ball and gang tackling the Blue Jays running back. 7.34 and counting here in the opening quarter. Scoreless. The Blue Jays are knocking at the door. And here's a little counter, and it looks like he's going to pick up enough for the first down. It all depends on that spot. Maybe looks like short. he's going to be just short. Needed to get across the 30-yard line, and Paul, they're right there. So interesting uh, fourth down here. What do you do, Coach? Looks like they're going to go for it. 
And why not? They're picking up five, you know, five, six yards per carry here, running the ball with Gensimer up the middle. I don't know if they watched some of that uh, Mount Carmel. Dude, we're thinking the same thing. I yeah. was just going to say that. How about it? Must have watched some of the videotape there on that game and saw how they just ran, them, ran up the middle. Here's a quick give right up the middle, and he's met right at the line Stop. of scrimmage. Ooh, it's going to be close. It's going to be very close. The one official closest to us gave him a pretty decent spot. The other one is uh, just shy of that 30-yard line. So we'll see. Ooh, that was a generous spot. As uh, Coach Van Fleet is actually talking to him a little bit and says, hey, yeah, that's that's a tough one. It's kind of a 50-50. Uh, they're not even going to measure it. It's going to be first down for the Blue Jays. I know we've, met, we've mentioned this a couple of times this year so far, Spence, but I don't get on these close calls. I mean, the refs must have better vision than we do. No. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Got to bring the chains out. Two wide receivers to the bottom. Motion will bring over to the trips. Going to throw the wide receiver screen, and that's uh, dropped. Incomplete pass. It was a forward pass. That was number nine, Justin. Justin. <laughs> Thiverage. Not I even believe. close. That's a tough one. Maybe his folks aren't listening to us live here on PA Sports Live. 622 <laughs> left to go in the opening quarter. I believe he has Scores. a brother, Jensen, by the way. I like that name a lot. And here's a run up the middle again. I'll tell you, he's a workhorse. Isaac Gensimer. He's listed at six foot one eighty, but he looks a lot bigger in pads, doesn't he? <laughs> sure does. And uh, man, the Loyal, Loyal Sox had a couple of big guys that they've had to go up against this year at running back. Talk about the the young man from Mifflinburg last week. Just an absolute beast. Take some time to get this play in. Third down and long situation here for the Blue Jays. Going to spread things out. Two wide receivers to each side. Quarterback in the shotgun. He's going to look left. Going to throw into the flat. Has a man open. Picks up the first down. And that is number 31, Jensen. Jensen. Special thanks to Cherry Lorson of Remax Edge. Paul, if you're in the market to buy, sell, or you just want to learn a little more about the whole entire process, give Cherry a call, 570-546-7791. First down here for the Blue Jays. Tight formation. Backs are in the eye. Going to toss it out to the left, and he's met right at the line of scrimmage. Maybe picks up two, Paul. Yeah, the last time the Lancers made a trip down here to Central Columbia, they won it in a shootout, 56 to 42. But this is a much different Blue Jays team. Very tough defensive-minded team and hard-nosed football team. Run the ball up the middle, and uh, they'll also spread you out. Yeah, they've done some different looks. They've spread it out, thrown it, and they've also uh, pounded it. And it looks like they might want to try to pound it here. Tight formation, going to fake it, then throw the little fade into the end zone, and it's incomplete. I like the play call. Everybody was kind of tricked up, and uh, the ball was maybe just thrown a little bit past young Jensen there, but uh, interesting play, Paul. Yeah, it was well covered, too. Uh, you know, give a shout-out there to the defender, pushing him towards the sideline, not letting him get to that back corner of the end zone. As a quarterback, that's one of those plays where you're, you're throwing more to a spot than you are to an actual receiver and just hoping that your receiver can get there and get to that spot. That's a great point, pal. And he stayed at home. Third long situation. And it looks like there was some movement up front. Kind of pick a side, either he said, she said. But I believe it's going to be against the Loyal Sock Lancers. Offsides. It's going to be a five-yard penalty, Paul. It will not be enough for the first down, but it actually brings it to a more manageable third, and we'll call it four. Yeah, and you know, you always hate to have penalties, and now you put them in a th third and short. Uh, put them in a third and short circumstance here, but it might not be too terrible for them. There's not a lot of whole, whole heck of a lot of room there to work with, uh, you know, right here inside the ten. The officials are going to go ahead and reset the play clock for 25. So Central will go back in the huddle. Ball spotted right at the left hash mark of the seven-yard line. So the Blue Jays could get a first down here, Paul. Don't need to score. 
Tight formation. Backs are in the eye behind the corner. Quarter's going to run right up the middle, and he's stacked at the line of scrimmage. Good job. Tough to pick up those numbers, my friend, but a nice job by number 22, I believe. Who is that, Paul? Uh, number 22 there on the tackle was Eric Holes again. Man, we're calling his name a lot. You think we'll uh, probably get that memorized here. <laughs> so it's a fourth down, and we'll call it one and a half. Four, 15 left to go in the opening quarter. Scoreless. And it looks like they are going to go for a field goal. You don't see this too much in high school athletics, but I love it. Field goal is going to be about a 20 yarder, and it just barely made the uprights. That was a line drive toe poke. Remind me of your forearm you hit the other day. So there it is. There's a first score of the ball game. The score with 3.59 left to go in the opening quarter. The Blue Jays strike first. 3 0, Paul. I know both teams here want to try to get out to a fast start, set the tempo. Loyal Sox sure did last week against Mifflinburg. But here this week, Central Columbia opting to take the points, figuring that it's probably going to be a defensive battle. It's going to be a defensive battle. And speaking of which, if you get into a battle with your car, there's only one place to go. Hey, sorry, I hit the wrong button. <laughs> Hi, I'm Brian Cochran, owner and operator of Cochran Automotive and Towing. We're happy to sponsor Williamsport football game on PA Sports Live. We have complete towing roadside services from lockouts, fuel delivery, flat tires, and breakdowns. We all know if you Yeah, great job fielding that uh, squib kick there, giving Loyal Sock an opportunity to have the ball near midfield to start this drive. Let's see what and Connor Watkins has in store for this drive. We'll try to get some points on the board. Two wide receivers will come to the bottom. Backs are in the eye behind Watkins. Paul, you said it. Great field position. We'll see if we can get this offense moving a little bit. Man, they should look sharp last week. Kavanaugh gets it right at the end. He is just trucked. Looks like number 53, the big fella, was right there. And, uh, man, he smacked him hard. That's J.R. Shear. I believe it was Michael Devine. Okay, I'm looking at Laurel Sox, right? Michael so Devine, <laughs> the 225-pound senior there on the tackle. Two wide receivers here way down tight. It looks like there's only one defensive back. So here comes the option play. Kavanaugh, get nowhere to go. Big-time play there by number 39. That's Evan Williams. And poor Kavanaugh, he had to elude one tackle, had to go backwards, and... He ended up losing about six or seven on the play. Yeah, so Loyal Sock had two wide receivers split all the way out to the right. A defender kind of playing in the nickel position in the slot there. Left unblocked, able to come up and make that tackle uh, for a five or six yard loss. Five wide receivers out there for Loyal Sock. On a third and we'll call it 15. Tough snap. Watkins going to roll out to the right. Has some running room. And he throws across his body, and it's uh, it's good. And some of the folks are saying incomplete, and that's what the official says. It's hard for us to see, but it looked like the ball was just a little too low there for number one, Brock Hepler. Fourth down, punting situation again for Loyal Sock. Yeah, Blue Jays send a inside linebacker on a stunt right up the middle, putting pressure in Connor Watkins' face, forcing him to roll out of the pocket to the right, and... That's a tough throw. Rolling to your right, trying to make a good throw. The folks at Fairfield Ford in Williamsport, week two in the new Honda CRV. Mom has never been so dang happy in her life. I asked her if I could borrow the car to take it on down here to Bloomsburg tonight. She said, heck no. Special thanks to Charlie Day and the good folks at Fairfield Ford in Williamsport. Give them a call or check them out online. Ford of Williamsport. And I'll tell you, you know, might be a great time to go ahead and check in with uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Lancer himself. Hey, it's Brian Sampson live, Madigan Hutton. What did you see this? No, it's like two of me. Well, <laughs> one and a half. <laughs> 
Second down and 15. One wide receiver will come closest to us, Paul. Backs are in the eye. Play action. Going to throw across the middle, and he's got a man open. Complete right there about the 39-yard line. So it's going to be close to that first down. Impressive passing attack as well from this Blue Jay team. Yeah, like I said last week, their offense was just as potent as their defense was stingy against Tawanda. And Loyal Sox, they got their work cut out for them here. I know it's only 3 nothing, but they have not had any success moving the ball, and Central Columbia is just imposing their will. Third and short, tight formation, and it looks like there was some movement up front. Hopefully it's against the Blue Jays and move them back five yards, but haven't got the official word. Dead ball, false start against the Blue Jays. That's cheating. That's going to move them back five, as we said, Paul. And uh, instead of third and one, it's now going to be third and six. Sorry, it took me a while. <laughs> this Lancer defense, it looks like some of them are kind of tired already, gasping for air. I know Coach Van Fleet's going to be subbing guys in and out, but he's going to need his horses out there. He's going to need Hunter Webb. He's going to need Dom Fischetti. He's going to need Cray McCracken there on the defensive line to get some push if they're going to want to, uh, you know, turn the tempo around in this game. Yeah, good point. And a lot of those guys actually play both ways, so we'll see if fatigue is a factor. Passing situation, get some pressure up front, and the ball is thrown incomplete. Good job there by Hunter Webb. We mentioned his name, number seven. Came on kind of a defensive end slash outside linebacker blitz. Didn't get to the quarterback, but ruffled his feathers enough and maybe rushed that throw. Hey, sometimes sometimes quarterback pressure, it, it, you know, a lot of people want to talk about sacks, tackles for losses, but just the pressure there alone determine the outcome of that play. Forced a bad throw, and now Loyal Sox going to get rolling all the way down to the 20-yard line where Loyal Sox will take over first and 10 on the 20. Yeah, this Central Columbia team, as we mentioned, is perfect so far in the young season, and they're much improved from just a year ago. First-year head coach Scott Dennis has his Blue Jays sitting at 3-0, and and they've already tripled uh, their win from a year ago, a season in which they went 1-9. In a way to first down, it's going to move the chains. Ball is going to be right off the 30. It has to, it's for the it's for the players, it's for the coaches, it's for the parents. We had a young lady, uh, you know, drop us a note here today, just cool. thanking us so much uh, for streaming these games live in HD on WebWeeklyLive.com, PASportsLive.com, and it's all because of our sponsors that we're able to do this. One of those sponsors is Real Estate Excel, also the Jirio Insurance Agency. Give them a call. They are just four great Jirio dudes, and uh, they can do anything. Uh, a, lot, a lot of love to those guys, and uh, special thanks to all of them. Look them up. Jirio Insurance Agency, also Real Estate Excel. First and ten for the Loyal Sock Lancers. Paul, first play of the second quarter. Williams, high snap, and that's a dangerous ball. He's going to pick it up, and he's going to try to run with it. And I'll tell you, Central was all over that high snap. Wasn't a very good play to begin with. Now we're looking at a, a high snap, a loss of about, I don't know, 25, 26, yeah. 27 yards. Now, Williams did what he could. He, uh, instead of jumping on the ball, he tried to pick it up and make something happen of it. But, uh, unfortunately, there was just way too many blue shirts there. So... As you said, it's, uh, I haven't even put it up on the scoreboard. It's uh, second, and we'll call it a country mile. Thirty-second and 37, I believe. So Watkins is in the end zone. He's going to wait for something to develop, and there he is. He's got Williams. Williams got some open green grass in front of him. AstroTurf, and a good tackle, but he does pick up a nice chunk to bring it up to about third down. That was a 20 bounds, and... Uh, 